I am Peggy with Headshots by Peggy Presents, and today we have John Swan back and camera tips for actors. John, it's that time again where we get to hang out and talk about super cool stuff. So what are we going to talk about today? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Um, no. Uh, um, well, I can share. Um, I'll share some 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 camera tips um, that I've been posting for the past month or since we saw each other last. I think uh, definitely, because I know, I think it was yesterday, uh, again, like I like all of your tips, but there's at least every, every, uh, every few, few days, I'll see one that like, that I really like. So let's just dive into it. And I'll let you know when we, when we get yeah. to that, that's the one. Yeah. It's interesting though. Cause when I, I, I have to think about like, um, I'm producing something when I like, like, uh, you know, like in the old days when they had a, an LP or when they had CDs, whatever, you had to produce them in such a way that not all of them were great songs. Some was a great song and then it was followed by an okay song and then it was followed by a new song, and, you know, because otherwise if you try to hit song, great song after great song after great song, it actually starts to backfire. So, um, uh, so I like that there's a little bit of a sort of, oh, this one's good. Oh, that one's great. Oh, that one's okay. I don't know about that one, you know. I like that there's that. And uh, also I'm trying to, um, I'm trying not to think so much about, everyone's gonna love this. I'm trying to think about, here's what I wanna do. Here's yeah. what I think about the, here's what I think about the camera and you know, how to think like the camera and not get caught up in, everyone's gonna love me. Um, and then I've been, as you, as you, as you can see, I've been doing, I've been sort of taking them to a new level where they're, they have visual design and they have music attached to them. And um, so that's kind of fun too. Um, and, uh, and it's interesting because, you know, we always say camera tips for actors, which they are camera tips for actors, but they're also camera tips for directors and camera tips for anybody who's not even an actor or director. I hear from directors all the time. I just talked to one the other day who said uh, he was in actually directing on set and he had my he had like my page open on Instagram or whatever. And he was just going through and using the tips and getting like these great performances. Um, funny. I can yeah, see so that. The, right. They're sort of uh, they're sort of that way. I sort of think of them as camera tips for human beings. Um, but and everybody's like, on camera right now. Like everybody's on video calls. Everybody is, you know, on, you know, doing things. Uh, your social media, um, people's headshots, their profile pictures. Um, we're more, it's not just actors. Everybody is representing themselves in this, in this area right now. So it's important for everyone. Yeah, that's what I'm keeping in mind. And um so for me, they're more about the camera and people or human behavior um, than just actors, although actors love them, directors love them. I know writers that love them. Um, so yeah, so they're great. So um, I'll start by sharing a few. One thing I was gonna talk about today, but I couldn't figure it out. The big dilemma for me, and I'll just put it out there as a dilemma for your for your, your viewers. Um, there's a difference between acting a scene and making it look like it belongs in a movie. And I think actors are under the impression, well, the director is gonna do that, right? The director is gonna make it look and sound like it belongs in a movie. And the director is not gonna do that. The director is going to hire actors who already know how to do that. And it's a particular talent or uh, additional talent because actors are brilliant at analyzing the material and creating the material and connecting with the material and being real and making it real and but I find that they don't they don't always 
approach something to create like a movie take. Um, and I'm that's the big thing I'm trying to wrap my head around these days. I have a, a technique for my book. Oh, and I'm working on the second book, by the way. Um, yay. Yay. Um, there's a technique from the book called movie trailer. And it's designed for that. It's designed to take a scene really well acted by an actor and make it look like it belongs in a movie. You know, and if I, if we all think about movie trailers, um, they have a certain sort of quality to them. Maybe you call it heightened. I'm not sure what you call it, but there's, you know, there's a, you know, if I said do a movie trailer of you saying hello, we could do a movie trailer of you saying hello and it would look like a movie. It's just the way movie trailers are. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of actors and directors love that particular technique because it's trying to get to exactly what I'm talking about. Because I think actors are sometimes, maybe more than sometimes doing themselves a disservice because they're doing a brilliant job of acting, brilliant job of connecting, brilliant, brilliant job of making it real. And yet it doesn't look like it belongs in a movie. And they want directors to do that, like I said. And directors are fine people who already look like they belong in a movie. I think that's what the audition process is, is the director's looking for people who look like they belong in a movie. Because right. the director just wants to, the director, the director just wants to direct the movie. The director doesn't want to like pull a performance out of an actor. So that's the big thing I'm trying to wrap my head around. Uh, you know, I like to sort of wrap my head around these cinematic concepts to figure out what I can communicate to actors to get them further. And that's the one I'm trying to figure out these days. Like, how can I communicate that to actors so they just know what to do? Um, and they're they're a little resistant to it because there are processes about being real and connecting and there's a big difference between an acting, an actors acting a scene and actors in a movie, big difference. And so that's the thing I'm trying to wrap my head around. Maybe next time we do the next blog, I'll have some ideas about it because I'm going to start to explore it in my sessions. So. That's cool. I think um, this is what I'm finding. Um, directors don't want to pull a performance out of an actor and I'm finding the more and more that I do the headshot strategy session with actors. And then I have actors that haven't done that work and then they come in. I'm like, this is a lot of work for me to pull this out of you. So now I'm just incorporating it completely. And in. like, if, if I'm doing your headshots, you're gonna go through the headshot strategy session because that teaches you how to be on camera. Uh, because otherwise I'm literally like, it's a lot of work. And so I can imagine it's the exact same thing on the movie set. You know, if an actor doesn't understand how to connect with the camera, if the actor doesn't understand how to look like they are on camera and they belong there, then a director has to work harder. It takes longer. It's more expensive. It's, you know, the whole thing. So, so that I can, I can completely understand what you're saying from that point of view. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a lot of work and they have, a, they have a big job to do. They have to direct a movie. And it's just like when they hire a cinematographer, they don't hire someone they have to pull the cinematography out of. And they don't hire an actor, they have to pull a performance out of it. And I think actors are under the impression that that's what directing is. Um, the director gets together with the actors and they explore the material and they mine the material and they try it this way and try it that way. And the director pulls a performance out of them and. That's not the case at all, like you said, it's not the case. And so I think actors are unconsciously, without knowing, I think that's what that means, uh, doing themselves a disservice because they expect that's what it is. And an audition is a job interview to see if you know how to make something look like it belongs in a movie. That's, and that part of that is being real and connecting and, making big choices, part of it, there's all of it, but there's another element to it, um, which I think actors, and I think it makes a big difference in their auditions, I think it makes a big, big difference, and, and they don't even realize it. But that's the thing I'm trying to wrap my head around. Maybe I'll have some specifics for it next time. Well, and that's just it, the audition. When you go to your audition and you look like you belong on camera, you look like you know what you're doing, your odds of, of getting a callback and booking is a lot higher because that's one of the things they want to know. Do you know what you're doing? And that's 
when you're doing your audition and you already look like you belong on camera, obviously that's a point in your favor. Right. And I like to think about, I always see myself as solutions, not theories, although I think I'm part theory as well, but I'm, I'm always looking for, I need to, I want to tell the actor, do this, do this, do this, and you'll achieve this big idea um, versus talk about a theory. And then we all sort of sit around and go, well, what do we do? Um, so that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around is, is the, are there, are there steps or there solutions I can communicate to actors to get them to, to get them to get there, to get them to get there. Um, but I think the first thing is they need to realize it and accept it because I think they, a lot of them misunderstand. So, yeah. all right, so let's get started. Give us a, give us a quote. We did just get started though, right? That's, that's yeah, we did. Started. We did. That was a good start, actually. Not a bad start. Okay, what am I doing here? Okay. So I'm just going to go backwards. Let's see if I can have no volume. So, um, as you know, I publish these on Instagram. I also publish on TikTok. Are you on TikTok yet? I am on TikTok and I haven't, I'm, I need to go. I, I used to do. Um, I used to do daily tips, had headshots and, uh, it just, I got overwhelming for me. Um, yeah, so a lot of yeah. I, I wasn't competing with the cute 15 year old. So I was like, you know what? I, I'm just going to like watch in the background once in a while. My kids send me TikToks. I watch those and that's kind of my limit, but I'll, I'll, I'll make a point to follow you. I knew you were on TikTok and I forgot. So I'll make a point to follow you and uh, start watching your TikToks. I think I have six followers on TikTok. Because I'll be number I'm, seven. I'll be number seven. Because I'm not a I'm not a 15 year old. You're right. Because you don't dance. You've got to dance. You've yeah. got to dance. Um, That's the. But I do much better on Instagram and on Facebook. Much better. Um, okay, so the first one reads like this. What the camera loves most about you is your imperfections. That was the one because I'm always telling my clients, don't hide your flaws. Your flaws are what makes you interesting. It's what makes you marketable. It's what makes you stand out. Like, yeah, your one eye is bigger than the other eye. That's cool. Or, you know, you have a lazy eye or you have a scar or whatever it is. And people want to hide that. And it's like, that's what's going to book you. Like, that's what's going to get people's attention. It makes me crazy. Yes. And I think especially these days, people are very filmmakers, casting directors. They love exactly what you're talking about. They love that uniqueness. They love that. Maybe there was a time, you know, a million years ago when everything had to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Not now. And it's not that way at all now. They want things to be not beautiful or flawed beauty or whatever. But I also mean it, I mean, I meant it mostly, although that's what a lot of people take from it and I, that's part of it. But I mean it mostly in terms of the flaws they possess as a human being. Just like the camera likes the flaws in your eyes or your look or whatever, it loves the flaws in who you are, your human being, or for actors and directors, your character. So when actors are putting together a character, I think they're taught to take care of their character and like their character, and you know, some of them even ennoble their character, which is great. But what the camera loves more than anything else is human behavior. That's kind of what it was designed to capture was human behavior. And your flaws, your character flaws are much more interesting in a story than the fact that you are this ideal person. So you wanna create your, you wanna create the good things or the noble things or the attractive things, that's a good way to put it. And then you wanna bring in, you know, a flaw or two. So my character is um, smart, cool and charming, but, He's also petty or whatever, you know, that, exactly. that might not be a great example, but, but they're, they're taught to, I think they're taught to like their characters, which I understand. So, so they don't think about 
this idea of capturing the character flaws, but it's the thing, just like physically, like you're saying, it's the thing that will make their performances stand out on camera. They'll have a because very attractive- Every person, like as amazing as I am, I've got those things, you know, I'm sure you do as well. Those little, you oh. know, traits that drive other people crazy. <laughs> But that also make us interesting. I mean, imagine, exactly. a world, imagine a world of perfect people. We'd all be bored. Exactly. And imagine a film with all perfect characters. All the villains are all bad and all the, the others are all good. Well, you know what? Villains have really good qualities in them and the good people have the bad qualities in them. And that's what keeps you, you know, your emotions going up and down and keeps you intrigued. I think that's, that's very valid. Yes, and uh, uh, to echo what you just said, character flaws are what drive the story. They're what, they're what drive the story. And so I think actors should embrace that. I think, like I said, actors are taught to like their characters, which I get, you have to like your character to some degree, uh, to a lot, large degree. But um, I always say to them, the more we know somebody in life, this is the part of what I do that I, I find really interesting because I'm really interested in human behavior. I'm part psychologist, I guess, and I'm interested in the camera. And in life, the more we get to know somebody, the more we see things in them we do not like. It doesn't, we're still gonna love them. We're still gonna wanna be in a relationship with them, but it's when you first get to know, know somebody that you say, that person was really nice. And you just think of them as this sort of wonderful human. And then you start to get to know them a little bit. And this is probably in love relationships as well. That's probably what that is. And then we just start to see flaws in each other. And we still love the person. And it doesn't mean any relationship has to change. But that's a phenomenon of just being a human being. And so I say to them, if you don't dislike anything about your character, you don't know your character very well. Um, and I think that's absolutely true. I like that. If you don't dislike anything about your character, you don't know your character very well. I think, I think that, has that been, has that, has, have you posted that? Because that's a quote you should post. Yeah, no, it's, it's in the, uh, it's in, it's in the hopper. It's actually coming up in the next couple of weeks. That's why I was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's really good because you can apply that in anything. Like if there's nothing that you don't like about your friend, then you're not really close friends. You know, exactly. there's nothing that you don't like about your partner. They're, you're really not, you don't know your partner that well because there's those things that are unlikable about everyone. But- And the, and the audience won't like your, won't, won't, under, won't know your character very well. You won't know your character very well. Um, and if you don't know your character, then how's your audience going to know your character? Because right. if you, if you're, if your your character isn't going to be that deep, it's going to be a very shallow character because you don't know the the other parts of it. You just blew my mind, John. That was really good. Um, thanks. Um, and uh, yeah, it's how it's also how the audience identifies with your character because exactly. we all we all know that we're flawed. So when we watch a character that is flawed, we think that's a human being like me. And if we, see somebody who's perfect, if, there, if we see somebody who's perfect, we just, we can't identify with them. Not at all. So, yeah. That was amazing. That was worth it, huh? That literally, we can just close it out right now. That, that was so good because, you know, I'm always telling, we've been talking about this the last few months uh, and I'm gonna bring it up again because I like to you know, beat a subject to complete death. Um, the more specific you are in your headshots, the more broad you, they will become. The more specific, the more deep you know your character, the more broad you become, the more people can relate to it because maybe I can relate to it, but but when you really dig deep and you know all of those things, then uh, other people can relate, you know, other parts of that, the deeper, the more specific. Uh, I like that a lot. I'm glad, thank you. Um, you, just won the, you just won the internet for the day. I won the internet. <laughs> <laughs>
you want the internet for today. Let's give John a prize. <laughs> we should put a trophy um, up or something. No, you know what? Just being able to share these moments with your viewers, that's the prize. That, that was really good. But that, I think, that literally, to me, was was worth its weight in gold. I don't know. That was really, that was deep for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that and put that in my teachings as well. I really liked that. So, um, um, uh, make... Uh, share, sh uh, share, the, share the power, spread the word, quote the source. Um, I'm kidding. Um, Absolutely. This okay, will be a a whole slideshow in my headshot strategist with your picture and your name this was this is going in there because <laughs> this is really good all right well that was absolutely amazing make sure that you're following john on tiktok on instagram and on facebook follow him all over the place make sure you sign up um take some classes from him these are some amazing stuff going on and most importantly, have an amazing day. I'll see you next week. Text or call today so that we can get you effective headshots that you can use as part of your marketing strategy. Headshots by Peggy, how can I help you? 303-242-5500.